Hi everyone, so I'm Steve Council and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about when academia meets industry as part of our APR um, research. Uh, I'm obviously a member of um, the team and I'm at Brunel University London, that's where I'm, I'm based. So just wanted a little bit to talk about um, what's happened in the past and uh, tools that have been developed in an academic environment have, have faced a number of problems. Um, the first of which they take a long time to reach industry maturity, okay, and they tend not to have been trialled in industry, actually used in the field um, by, by practitioners. So in the past, academic outputs of research projects have not tended to be adopted fully um, because of those two reasons, but obviously there are many other reasons why that, that they might not be as successful as, as we'd like. The formal methods community is, is, a, is a notable exception to this, so the Z um, language highly applicable in an industry and, and, and was based in, in, in an academic setting as, as um, when it was developed. In our experience also there's many barriers to why industry can or cannot adopt a particular technology and one of those is actually including um, the confidence it requires and building that confidence in a tool in order that it, that tool and the people using it can react quickly to the needs of industry. Um, whether they are in, in industry already or, or academics. So, the, and that's partly attributed to the fact that long-term aims of academia, the, long, the, the goals of academia, often conflict with short-term industry aims. So how does APR fit into this? Well, we think that APR is a tool that has huge relevance to industry and its characteristics lend itself to use in industry. For example, it can reduce the developer workloads in the fixing of bugs, and that's probably an obvious thing to say, but that has immediate financial resonance in terms of um, the amount of money it's saved, um, which would not ordinarily be spent fixing bugs. It can also be verifiable by industry, so the impact of APR is immediately visible. What it actually what is actually done is is straight away visible to what to, to, to developers, and and it's a tangible thing. You can actually see a quantifiable um, uh, effect, if you like. So APR techniques can also be tailored to the needs of industry. So the level of interaction between a tool, an APR tool, and a developer, well, it can be it can be regulated. You can decide exactly what level you want of interaction, um, and it can evolve. Um, so lessen or increase the, from the tool's perspective. APR is also a concept which is easily understood, we feel, by industry. So it's immediately clear what it does, um, what it is, and what its potential is for fixing bugs quickly and at a lesser cost. Um, one notable and impactful example, I thought to give you one, there are other examples, but most, well, one of the most notable and impactful examples of APR in the field is by, is, is the SatFix tool, which is developed by Mark Harmon in the team at Facebook. And SatFix uses, in turn, something called Getafix. Getafix, what Getafix does is it learns from a pool of fixes, um, those which are most often or have been most often used by engineers in the past, and it suggests the best fixes for the issue under consideration based on that learning process. SAP fix then gets hold of the results of what Getafix has done and evaluates each potential fix provided by Getafix uh, and, and tests each, and then proposes the most relevant and applicable fix um, for that particular bug. Um, and that, that fix is then reviewed by a developer before, if it, well, if agreed, um, will automatically be deployed by SAPFIX. So um, the fix is automatically um, applied once it has been reviewed and evaluated. There's a link there if you wanted to have a look at more details about this particular um, tool. That's one example of, of APR in action. Um, over, it's overcome in turn many of the problems I mentioned in the previous, previous slide. So, yeah, that's a good news story, but it's not all good news. Um, ultimately, there's, a, there's this issue of trust so um, trust in the quality of the fixes applied by a tool, and that, that takes time to build up. Confidence in a specific tool takes time to build up. So that, that's something that, about a hurdle which has to be overcome. The choice of which fix to apply might, may depend heavily on the level of experience of the developer. Okay, so, um, but, but, so processes for establishing um, which fix to apply and how that, how that decision is made um, uh, have to be set out very, very clearly. For some industrial applications, faith in, the, in a product is, is all encompassing. So, so you have to ask the question, is APR appropriate 
in every single domain. There may be some domains where it, it, it's not it's not applicable. So we can't say it's a catch-all technology at this stage. And obviously, it remains to be seen how widely applied it, it, it can be. So that there's a, some not so good not such good news, but obviously that's that these are all caveats really on the use of APR as much as disadvantages, but they're hurdles which have potentially have to be overcome. Um, that's it, I think, um, in terms of my summary of APR and its role in, in industry. Um, obviously, a lot of, lot of things still to do, still to be done, and, and, but we feel that APR could be a real game changer in terms of how industry and academia collaborate. Okay? And it is, it is a technology which has direct um, effect on a really highly problematic and, and costly problem, as we all know, um, the plugs are. It's also highly impactful. We can see the impact of what it does. It's, it's, its work is evident, it's, it's tangible. So there are, we do think for those two reasons alone, that APR could be different in terms of its applicability in industry. Okay, I think that's it for now. So um, thanks, thanks for listening um, and um, uh, see you later.